Hey guys, how's it going? So do you see what's in the back of the truck? We are planting our orchard today. This is so exciting. Aaron and I, as we were driving out here with the trees, we're just commenting on how excited we are for the season and how this kind of feels like it's the kickoff. I mean, we've done little projects here and there. I planted a couple of containers and such and you know, some garden maintenance, but actually putting some new plants in the ground, some new trees that are gonna bring us food. It's just such an exciting feeling. So here they are. You guys wouldn't even believe how long we spent trying to figure out the math. <laughs> on the area where we're planting these. I thought I had room for 10 and I only have room for nine, which is totally fine. So I think what I'm gonna do, I've got an aprium in here. It's my only kind of like weird fruit. I think I'm gonna plant that one somewhere else and we'll utilize the other nine out here. And we're in the very far corner of the new property. So this is the south, the west corner right here. You can see we've got a ton of stakes in the ground. In fact, Aaron's gonna take the drone up so that you can see uh, even got some brightly colored plates so you guys can see the the lines. I hope it makes sense um, But what we've got going on here the first stakes indicate where a fence is gonna go so There'll be a fence running from this stake to the one over there and it'll run back here as well And it will be a six-foot kind of privacy fence that will be black and we're going to hide all of our palletized items behind it. It's 95 feet wide, and then we'll also probably have our composting bin on the far side over there. These short stakes here indicate where our fruit trees are going, and then in front of it indicates our cut flower garden. So right in front of the little orchard, so let me back up here. So we'll have the six foot privacy fence here, and then we're gonna have a graduated picket fence coming down from that, going along each side to the front of the orchard space. That way it kind of makes it its own room. There will be a garden shed in the center right up front so the trees will wrap around the back side of it. And then we have 15 foot walkways. And then we have our four corners of our cut flower garden in the, in the center. There's a huge square area where we're gonna put a fountain in and some benches and things like that. And that is the only area right there that may change uh, size-wise. It's incredibly difficult to explain kind of the layout. I did do a sketch of it, and so maybe we can toss that on the screen as well. And I don't know, I can hear the drone up there. Maybe it makes sense with you guys seeing it, you know, top down. Um, but there will be a 15-foot walkway in front of the cut flower areas in front of the shed and orchard and then there'll also be 15 foot walkways in a cross pattern through the cut flower garden just splitting those four corners up much like last year except for it's going to be a little bit more put together and the corners are not going to be as big uh, i do not need uh, the size of space that i grew in last year was completely like kind of out of control for what we were using it for i don't need it to be that big so this will be a little bit more manageable I think. So as far as fruit trees go, I've got the one aprium, so that'll be the one that I plant somewhere else, which is an apricot plum cross called Cotton Candy. Um, and I decided to just plant the nine trees that were kind of normal fruit that I knew that we would eat and I know what they taste like and so forth. The aprium's kind of like the one-off, so it makes sense to tuck it somewhere else just in case like it's not as awesome as we think it's gonna be. Um, in that case, you know, it might be something in the orchard space we would want to remove to put something in that we could utilize more of. Um, but this way, we've got like the nine core trees in here that can stay, but I've got two peaches, two apples, two apricots, a nectarine, a pear, and a plum. And Aaron wanted more fruit trees than that, and I think we're gonna have fruit running out of our ears. I think we're gonna have to give a lot of it away, which is perfect. I will love to be able to do that. And I wager that once we start putting things in here, this space up to the house is not gonna feel quite as big. Right now, it's just so hard to tell um, because there's just nothing there. So here's what we've got in the back of the truck in the way of supplies. Of course, we've got our trees. We've got soil acidifier because fruit trees do prefer soil on the neutral to slightly acidic side. We've got biotin starter fertilizer. We also have bags of land and sea compost right over there that we're gonna use. There's my coat because it's 55 degrees out right now. It's awesome out here. And then we've got some digging tools, an auger and some shovels. So I think what I'd like to do is get these trees out and placed, and then we'll kind of step back and take a look and make sure we like the way it looks.
Oh my gosh, it already looks bigger when you see those sitting out next to the steaks. Yeah, that's awesome. Oh, I am so excited. So excited. Okay, so here's how we've placed them. I am standing in the walkway that's gonna lead toward the orchard through the cut flower garden. There's going to be a little shed right here with double doors so we can swing them open with a beautiful table and maybe a pretty light fixture dropped from the center where we can arrange flowers. I say we, because you want that too, right? I, I've been, <laughs> it's been on my list, yes. Yes. So we flanked the front of the shed with the two apricots. I have such fond memories of apricot trees because my parents still have a big, beautiful one in their garden space and it blooms beautifully and I thought, oh, how pretty would that be to have some branches over that shed kind of eventually um, getting close. I think there's actually room to have a couple of feet at least, it's never gonna touch the shed, but to kind of, um, I don't know, frame it in and have those beautiful blooms in the spring. And then on either side of the apricots, we put the two apple trees. So we'll have white bloomers on the outer part and pink bloomers on the inner part. And then in the back on this side, we've got the two peaches. There's the red Bartlett pear. There's the Santa Rosa plum. And then the nectarine is in the back corner. So there are three types of trees that you normally find. Uh, well, most often I think you find semi-dwarf trees, which is what we have here. Um, and those typically range in like a 12 to 20 foot tall and wide size at maturity, depending on the tree. And then you can also find them in dwarf varieties. Sometimes they're a little bit harder to come by. And the dwarf and semi-dwarf trees have been grafted onto a rootstock that keep their growth and um, size in check. And then there are standard trees. And standard trees can get very, very large. So you wanna make sure um, that you have the space for whatever variety you're putting in your yard and usually the tags will specify what they are but it's definitely worth asking somebody at your garden center or doing a quick google search because it would just be heartbreaking to get something in that ended up not being quite the right size and same goes for whether or not you need a pollinator so some fruit trees are self-fertile meaning they don't need a second tree in order for them to cross pollinate with something else so that they'll bear fruit but some varieties do require that. So like my Honeycrisp apple, I can't just plant that all by itself and expect to get apples. I have to have another variety. You wanna make sure if you do need that second variety that you choose one that is a proper pollinator for the other and that they're compatible in terms of bloom time because you have to have them blooming at the same time in order for them to cross pollinate. And I've never put the spacing thing to the test in terms of planting pollinators, how far apart you can plant them. Um, but I believe that you should try to to put them within 100 feet of each other. And I do know that, I mean, there's a lot of pollinators out there. Honeybees are not the only pollinators, um, but honeybees can travel up to two miles away from their hive. Not to say that they would, because I imagine if you've got another apple tree a mile down the road, if they've got a lot to forage from between you and that other apple tree, it's likely they probably, I, I don't know, I don't know the life of a bee and what they do during the day, but I can't imagine that they would want to travel a mile to another apple tree. Maybe they do, I don't know. Um, I just just don't know if the fruit set would be quite as good as if you put them closer together. A couple of other things, our trees that we're planting today are semi-dwarfs. In our area, they typically grow about 15 by 15. So we've allowed them enough space to where there, there will be almost four feet between each tree at maturity. Because it is really important that your fruit trees have proper airflow and light that can penetrate the leaf canopies. It keeps your trees healthier. It keeps the fruit production higher. And you wanna be able to maneuver around them. You wanna be able to walk between them. And as far as location, I think this is gonna be perfect. First off, it's full sun. They require six to eight hours minimum of full sun every day to be their healthiest selves. Um, you also wanna consider wind. If you live in a high wind area, which we do, you wanna make sure you've got some kind of wind block nearby, which this is perfect because these homes were recently built. We do have our Arborvita hedge going. It's still a baby, but it will eventually kind of help as well. Um, because if you live in heavy wind and you've got or heavy wind areas and you've got a tree full of fruit, those trees just ha are supporting so much more weight that you're much more likely to have broken branches. So you want to make sure you've got like a windbreak of trees or buildings or something like that, but somewhere where they can still get quite a bit of sun. Okay, that was an awful lot of information. I feel like we should just start in with planting. Maybe at some point we'll put together like a orchard guide of some kind where we can sit down and talk through more details because there are so many options when it comes to fruit trees and so many things to think about. That's the aprium right there. I'm really excited about it. Like This one got the shaft. Well, it did. So we've got apple, apricot, nectarine, peach, pear, plum. What about oranges? <laughs> he laughs. <laughs> we've got lemons and limes. 
all ready to roll in the sun porch for you. Nice. No oranges though, not yet. They're so good too, the lemons and limes. They are. Are you wanting to try the auger first? Yeah. Oh, so you think what, like three or four holes in a I don't know. section? We'll, just, we'll see how it does. Okay, here we go. Win on this. Okay, real quick, we have put a little bit of biotone starter fertilizer, soil acidifier, and land and sea in the bottom of the hole. And we will backfill with a little bit more of the land and sea, which is sitting right there, because we're working on making our super high pH soil more acidic so that these trees are happy. Most of these trees, they're in seven gallon cans, and none of them should be root bound because they're fairly new trees, look at this. Like I don't, really don't even need to do any fluffing of the root balls at all. The only time you really wanna break a root memory is if you have big roots that are circling really, really uh, tightly. And that's really the only case. This is a really nice looking root ball. Also, you can see the graft union. You wanna make sure to bury your tree no deeper than it is in its can. I mean, you can put a little soil over the top just to incorporate it into the landscape, but you don't wanna bury up the trunk at all. All right, they are all in the ground. They'll look a little bit better once they have leaves, but it's gonna be so exciting that we get to see them bloom and put on maybe even a little bit of fruit this year. I've heard some gardeners say that taking the fruit off of the trees the first year in particular, so that the tree can send energy into the roots, like producing a really strong root system as opposed to sustaining fruit, is a good idea. But these trees are fairly established. They're a little bit older, and we typically let them fruit the first year. Um, I haven't seen any adverse effects from that, so uh, we were just talking about how excited we are to possibly get to taste some of this this year. So you can see the area around the trees here. We've got it kind of raked out, and Aaron got the hose pulled out so I could get them all watered in. And now I'll just have to keep an eye on them for the first little while uh, until we get our irrigation set up. We have water run out here, like there's a hose there. There's also a hose over here. And we've got some zones we're gonna be tapping into over here to bring actual um, irrigation from our system so we can run it with our phone. Uh, anyway, so until we get that set up, we'll be watering with a hose and we just have to keep an eye on stuff. And they don't dry out super quick in the spring, so it won't be a huge chore, I don't think. This whole process has made me even more excited about the little shed that we're gonna put in here, which may or may not happen this year. We kind of bumped it down our priority list because of other projects we've got going on um, that are kind of taking a lot of our time and that sort of thing. Um, so it might be an empty space this year. It may end up with a shed in it. Who knows? But I do know that we will end up with some cut flowers out here. We will end up with fruit trees that hopefully uh, have a few little fruit on them and that will be exciting to me. So we will come back because I do have to spray these. They need one more application of uh, dormant oil. So I'm gonna do that probably tomorrow and I'll just make another video about that uh, and talk to you guys about our schedule, what we do around here for spray on fruit trees. And then, I mean, there's just a whole slew of things we can talk about. So it's gonna be a really fun process, I think, just to see how this does throughout the season, um, see what kind of fruit does the best and what produces the most uh, for us. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. It's such an exciting day. This is the, like the first things that we've put in the ground, like real things, trees. It's just awesome. So let the season begin. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.